People are responding to your energy the way you are projecting yourself out into the world. And when you do this one thing, it changes everything about your vibration and about the way people perceive you. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now, this video is all about understanding the one thing that changes everything when it comes to attracting love and relationships. And the thing is, is unless people do this thing, that process alone will fail. So it has to do with awareness and it has to do with knowing who you are at your core and the way you are showing up in the world. Now imagine that we're in, imagine that you're in a play and in this play, you have been playing a certain character and that this character you are playing may have been consciously chasing or wanting someone to come into that character's life, believing that maybe if this person did come into their life, that they would then love themselves more and feel more worthy, whole and complete. And that this character would do anything it took and would, would think about things and, and really put energy into this, into this attainment of this person that they may be intending to attract into their life. But imagine that the more this person tries, the more resistance they create, and the more they end up finding themselves playing a different role. Imagine that this person that is a character in this play ends up trying to be the cameo in someone else's movie. They view someone else as the star of the movie, and they are then trying to attract that person into their life. Well. The thing is, is when we have that energy dynamic going on and we are intending to attract love into our life, but we are doing it in a way where we think and we are having treating someone else on a pedestal, the energy that we are putting out is one where then they will respond to us in the way we are treating them. So when it comes to love and relationships and attracting it, the reason it fails so often is because people play a cameo role in the movie of their own life. You are the star of your own movie and the thing that you must do in order to attract love and relationship is to rewire yourself and that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video and I think this video will change your life and you'll start to see yourself in a new way and when you see yourself in a new way you'll then also project something out new into the world as well. So when it comes to this the important part to understand is how you're showing up in the world first off of being the star of your own movie. Now this character that you've been playing most likely is a character that decided at a certain point in your life, if you look at your whole entire timeline of your life, when you were maybe seven years old, seven years old, why yo, <laughs> seven years old, there may have been something that happened that you then gave something a meaning. And then that meaning may have told you to play small. That meaning may told you it was afraid for you to express yourself. And in that moment, you agreed to that meaning and from that point going forward, that became a driving force in your life. Now here's something that I've recently come to understand and it has to do, and it's, it's, it works for everybody, what I'm about to share with you. It has to do with understanding your rules as to what it takes for you to feel worthy, whole and complete. So your rules of love of what it takes for you to feel love. And I'll show you, because most people, this is subconscious, this is something they're not actually aware of. And there's these conflicting ideologies inside of people. And because of that, they can't actually feel worthy, whole, and complete. But remember, people feel what you feel. So you become more attractive when you love yourself more. And the thing is, is some people, they set up such impossible parameters for them to love themselves because they set parameters that are first off outside of themselves. Imagine setting a parameter that I know that I feel love when somebody is constantly giving me things. I feel love when there is, uh, there's constant recognition and attention from someone else. I will feel love when um, this person does exactly what I want them to do, when I control them. You see, we have, many of us will have different versions of this, but we'll have ideas of love and rules 
about love that say when we've achieved love in our own life. And the way that we normally learn about love, by the way, is from our parents. It's what we were modeled growing up. Now yesterday I was at a, I was at this um, kind of mastermind type thing with my buddy Victor Odo and about 15, 20 other people. And I was talking to Victor and he became aware of something in his life and I was talking to him and it just became so crystal clear of me sharing what you and I'm sharing in this video right now. Victor has been worried for the last year. Hope he's okay with me sharing this story. <laughs> Victor has been okay, or Victor will be okay with this, me sharing this video. <laughs> Victor, about uh, a year ago, had a, a, um, like a dream experience where one of his children, his kids, had a uh, traumatic accident and passed away. It was a dream, not real. But the dream began to live in his own mind. And it became this reoccurring thing that would just keep coming up. I remember we, he would do some plant medicine ceremony in Costa Rica. It would just keep coming up for him, keep coming up for him. He'd be in meditation, he'd wake up, and he'd have just these memories, this absolute fear that he was going to lose his daughter, the first thing that he ever brought into this world. And it was this overlaying fear that he just couldn't figure out. Why am I having this thing come up over and over again? Is it, is it some premonition dream or what is this? And for a year straight, I was listening to him. I was trying to help him through it. And then it became absolutely crystal clear when I was talking to him yesterday. Because I was asking about his parents. Because Victor, if you don't know, was in a firecracker accident when he was a kid. It was a very traumatic firecracker accident where it exploded on top of him and it burned him on the sides and it was very painful for him. And his parents felt incredibly guilty about it. They thought, oh, I could have done something different. It was a very traumatic experience. And from that point forward, Victor had this mentality of something horrible can happen. What is going to happen that's wrong? And he had this uh, mentality and, and worry about himself and probably a little bit of guilt because he, he in a way felt guilty that his parents may have felt guilty and. It was like this little cycle. But from that point going forward, that situation, he decided and he learned from his parents who in a, in a very needy way was constantly trying to control him and his environment and him being safe and they were constantly worrying about him. His mom used to tell him, I worry about you because I love you. So Victor then started to associate love with worry, love is worry. And this isn't just in his, his uh, kid's life and his, his relationship with his wife. This is also in his relationship with money, his relationship with his business, his relationship with many different things. He's worried that something is going to go wrong. And on one hand, this is his conflicting ideology that was crystal clear to me when I was talking to him. Victor wants to be a great dad. Victor is a great dad. You see him with his kids. He spends a lot of time with them. He cares about them. He does a lot of things with them. It's very obvious. But what Victor didn't realize until yesterday was that when he was saying, I love you to his kids, subconsciously he was saying, I worry you. I worry about you. Because in order for him to be a great parent, in order for him to love his kids, he has to worry about his kids because of his idea of love. And because of the way he was modeled that from his parents. And if he wants to love his business, he must worry his business. I don't love you, I worry you. I worry you. I worry you. I worry you. Do you see? This is what I'm saying. And this is what became so, it was like a whole new world for Victor when he figured this out. And he's like a different person now. But the reason I share this with you is because what area of your life is your definition of love? For me, I was controlled as a kid. Completely controlled. My brother and I, from seven to 15 years old, had a crazy stepmom in our life who controlled every aspect of our life. There were times we barely ate food. We were both very skinny at our ages. We, a lot of times, were locked out of the house and had to work outside. We weren't allowed to have friends. We had to earn going to school. We got school activities taken away from us. We couldn't go to band camp if I got in trouble. And it was control. I thought love is control. 
So even after that, my 15 years old came around, my dad divorced her, never have to deal with her again. I found myself in relationships with people that wanted to control me because that to me was what I thought love was. And now in my own life, I see it in my shadow aspect because I control my business. I am a fixer. If somebody in my family is going through something, I want to fix it. Whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, I want to fix it, control it. Because I have associated love with control. Now the reason I'm sharing this with you is because every single person will have a story, this play that we're talking about, this play for the way reality works that we keep on autopilot and that keeps running our life out over and over again. And each one of us will have maybe a little bit different story. It doesn't matter though. They're all rooted in the same thing. What is our definition of love and how do I know I felt it? And if you make it very hard for you to feel love, it's gonna be very hard for you to feel love. And if, remember, if you're not feeling love, you're not gonna attract and put out the energy of someone else that can love you back for you. So what are your rules for love? Is your rules for love external? This person has to do this. This person has to act this way. This person has to do what I asked them to do. This person has to acknowledge me a certain number of times a day, say I love you in a certain number of times, but buy me gifts. Those are all external things. What if you made it extraordinarily easy for you to love yourself? What if loving yourself could be as simple as feeling gratitude for you? What if loving yourself could be as simple as doing something for yourself? As recognizing something within yourself? What if you let it be okay you didn't love yourself every day? And you got let go of the rule of how often you have to love yourself because then we get into this perpetual cycle. The reason I share this and the reason this has so much to do with attracting love is because until you love yourself, no one else can truly love you. And if somebody else does come into your life, that person may love you at a surface level because you love yourself at a surface level. Everything in your life changes when you become aware of the fabric of reality, which is love. And what are your definitions for love? And what does love mean to you? And if you want to look at what that is, look to your relationship with your parents. That's normally where it is because that's what we model. And that's what we, we learn from. And sometimes we rebel. Sometimes we rebel in certain ways. They may treat us a certain way and show us love in a certain way. You say, we'll say, I'll never treat my kids that way. I'll do this in a different way. You know, I'll never punish my kids because my brother and I were punished. I'll never spank my kids. I don't have kids yet, but that's, that's my definition. But the key to this is realizing love, what it takes for you to feel love, and can you be the source of love? And think about how funny this is. Here we are, and what we say is when I get into a relationship with someone else, I will feel they will love me, and then I will give myself permission to feel love. So once this happens, I have a rule Many people have a rule based on watching Disney movies, based on what they think society has to be, based on believing the source of love is outside of themselves. They're getting to a relationship and say, oh, now that this person loves me and views me in a certain way because it goes according to my rules that I learned growing up, now I can love myself. The funny thing is, is you are generating that love from within you and your own energy field. You are just now giving yourself permission because your rules are now being met. Do you see? You're the source to begin with. You were the source all along. This relationship and attracting love thing is a symbol for you coming into realization that you are the source of love. You are worthy, whole, and complete. And the most common limiting belief that people have in the world is that I am not enough. It is because we give these external benchmarks about what it takes for us to feel love. The wiring inside is messed up. But we have to claim that. Yes, maybe we learned it growing up. Maybe we learned it from our parents, but we agree to it. And our life has agreements that we've made. And I mean that in very conscious ways. Something happened when we're seven, we agree that this is the meaning. And now I have to worry. Because if I worry, then I love. And I've, my mom worried about me because she loved, she loved me. And that's why she worried. And I want to love my kids and I want to be a great dad. Not knowing that there's this perspective there of that exact thing this conflicting ideology. I talked to two or three people yesterday about the same kind of format that I'm now putting into an actual step-by-step -step process because you can unveil 
your definition of love with a couple questions and a couple and a framework. I'm going to call it the framework. And it will show you and reveal to you your rules about you, about your identity. And when you become aware of these things, this is when everything begins to change. But you see, this, you being the meaning generator, you are the star of your own movie. This is you right here. And even if you get into a relationship or you get love with someone else and they treat you a certain way, you're giving it, they're meeting your rule. But instead of trying to change the outside, which is where people feel pain, they're trying to change and have someone, put someone on a pedestal, wanting someone to love them back, all these things. But guess what? Instead of trying to change the outside, which is just a mere reflection of the inside, change the rule that says that you can only feel 100% love, whole and complete when this person's in a relationship with you. Because remember, that's just a symbol. Person's a symbol. Everything's a reflection in reality anyways. Everything, every single thing is a reflection. So if you want someone to love you, you must first love yourself. How do you love yourself? You become aware of your rules about what it takes to love. You become aware of what your parents may have told you about love and how they may have expressed it to you. And then from there, you make choices about your new rules of love and you make it extraordinarily easy for you to love yourself. Not hard, not they have to do this, this, and this, and other people have to do this, no. You are the source. Make it easy, make your rules easy for you to feel love. Anytime I take a bath, anytime I read about something I'm passionate about, anytime I feel, put my hands over my heart like this, anytime I think of something I'm grateful for, I will love myself. Make it extraordinarily easy for you to love yourself and it will be easier. And when you do that, your whole entire life will change because the outer reality, it's just a reflection. That's it. Outer reality is a reflection of your inner source. You have the ability to feel love, whole and complete. And the reason many times love, relationship, attraction fails is because people externalize their own love and they put these impossible parameters as to what it takes to be lovable. People are worried they're not enough. People are worried they're not loved. It's all because of meanings of the past and trying to change the outer reality. All you do is change the rules about what it takes for you to feel love and you start acting from that new identity. You start loving yourself more. You start taking more baths, going for walks, whatever it takes and doing something outside of the old identity. So let me know if you want me to make a part two of this video. Maybe I'll make a part two that's ex it's absolutely about the how. Like this video if you want me to do that. There's also an attract love meditation you'll see below. So many people have attracted love listening to that. It helps you to feel worthy, whole, and complete. Listen to that for 21 days. Watch what happens. Just read the comments as soon as possible. Other than that, I hope you enjoy this video. Peace, much love, and namaste.